<laughs> because one, it incorporates one, it incorporates the key important things that Lee wants students to walk out of that class with. It pushes at all levels of the depth of knowledge. Because those depth of knowledge that you're pushing is all the way to creation, which is kind of the kind of when we think about the next generation of the learning, it's not about creation. I can see that his assessment can be in here because you're going to look about how do you build those state those critiquing, how do you assess whether they can critique, communicate, and I bet you have assessments that are already built that do that. And you have your units that you're going to measure each unit, like where are they with emphasis, repetition, texture balance. And so you'll have assessments for each one of those to see if they know. And then you can build a goal that would say, well, you know, 100% of the students will at least demonstrate 70% proficiency on the assessments that measure that. There you go. You have it. Now, you can take it and kind of, you know, whatever I, I crushed all the, the words there somehow. But, um, that's, you took all that you knew and you would put it in a statement that you really could say, okay, I can see how did my kids do? And hopefully when we get into it and you go, whoa, that was a little bit big, oh, wait, wait a second. That state of revision is what we want to do. We want to come back and say, well, and even you started revising, you go, well, wait a second. Let's start a little bit more narrow so I can figure this out. That's what we want to do. How does that feel as a learning focus? It feels terrific. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Um, throw it out to the crowd. What do you think? Um, yeah. Oh. Mean there'll be a target. Oh, a target. And yeah. that's where you're going to address how you're going to measure. Yes. Okay. But see, I will say, when I read these other pieces of it, correct me if I'm wrong, you assessed your students already, didn't you? Kind of some fundamental. And what, uh -oh. and what Lee's already done is he's kind of gotten what I would call, here's an assessment term. He's done a curriculum-based measure which means a curriculum-based measure is something that he assessed the students on kind of some foundational skills that are the underpinnings of the whole course. So what was that assessment you kind of did with the students? So um, every week, along with our units, we look at the work of professional communicators. Uh, you know, so for photography, it might be a, a, a famous photographer or photojournalist or another artist in some form. Um, and we discuss their work all week. Uh, and write essays about it um, and interpret it. Um, and from day one this year, I was already throwing out multiple, a lot of you know visual information for people to, for kids to respond to. Um, and I'm asking them to do these things. Uh, writing, they're writing. Um, things about the stuff that I'm giving to them and it's before it's why we're still doing nuts and bolts stuff right. and community building stuff and I haven't done any right. like this is how you do it or vocabulary stuff yet right. so what Lee's done is he's got a baseline measure that's not a pre and post assessment um, um, what he's done is he's done a baseline measure on the fundamental skills that they might have or what he's kind of assessing and he's probably can see students that maybe have some really some prerequisite skills, have some really strong knowledge, and he has may see some students that really struggle to write at all and communicate. Well, when now when I'm going to jump to like maybe my criterion three, if we thought about it, those students that he's starting to earmark is going, ooh, they really struggle to express themselves in writing and communicate. That may be his criterion three. When he sets his overarching target, his overarching target is going to be what's the even criterion three. What do they got to get to? You know, at the end of this time, where do I have to get to that thing? They're very different targets. I will say this. 
is a very different target and very different constructs than we used to be thinking around how PLC goals are, are set. It's very different. Because PLC goals were kind of set, what they would call SMART goals, that set on six-week cycles of units of instruction. And the one problem I always kind of had is the world didn't get solved in six weeks. Kids are complicated. <laughs> they take a long time. And so there's, but the cycles are not bad. He still has units, right? And he can assess accomplishment away on the units of instruction. But his overarching goal is going to be this fundamental compilation of what it is. And it can be the sets of units, because I remember seeing yours too. Is yours is there. I think it's all set. It's the compilations of those units that's going to be your... Exactly. That's what, exactly what I'm trying to do. Is His is so overarching with math sometimes. I mean, there are pieces that, that go through the entire year, but then there's definite things that are just these two weeks, these right. two months. But you know. so what you got to think about is those become those little things in the IE parentheses. Yeah, the mm -hmm. the, those are the building blocks. Okay. But there's the fundamentals right. things about like how you had like I think communicate or I, I, I can't I read a lot of them no. in the last <laughs> week and so but I remember yours had that piece. Of right. It. So what we got to do is the reason why this is so important is once you do this, your assessments become. The ability for you to evaluate what you're going to use as, as your evidence becomes much more clear because you really define the things you want the kids to know. The reason why I feel this is so important for us to do this right is if I was to handed you some visual arts common assessment, it would be totally disconnected from anything you're doing. And that's going to be your evaluating one of your kids learning? Bullshit. That's not going to evaluate anything. It's going to evaluate a set of standards way out here that is totally disconnected from the work. If you accomplish this with all your kids, that's amazing work. That's why we have to write it so well. But it's not easy. It's not easy. So I'm going to come back, really kind of an emotional feeling. Does that feel doable? Does that bring clarity? Or does it bring more confusion? Uh, it brings clarity. OK. Um, and <clears throat> no, it brings clarity. And um, you know, I think part of it, part of it for me is figuring out, you know, what 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 form it takes, you know, for the rest of the for the rest of the semester. Um, and part of my confusion too is like, do I have to do this for Criterion three and six, or is it is it three or six, or both? Okay. It's, it's, it's one or the other. It's three or six. Um, so that's a small population versus all the students. Three is the small population. So you could look at it and say, OK, that group that you started to earmark, kind of, a lot of the ones in Rhode Island do, they kind of go a, a level one, level two, level three students. They kind of categorize students kind of like are, have some real lacking skills. Students that seem to be right where you would predict for them. And then some students, you go, whoa. They really have, they come in with stuff that surprised you. So if you were to think about the criterion, is you would say, well, I could circle those students in your pre-assessment that says, okay, I'm going to work on those, and I'm going to set a goal that all these kids are going to get the X based on that. Well, you know if you set that goal, you actually have essentially done a six because all the kids are going to get there. You just have said, my most emphasis right now is with that set of Eight. And does that set of eight? Okay, so it could be as few as eight. Yeah. Okay, and it and it could be eight kids throughout the day, or it could be eight kids in one period. That's right. for, that's for me to. Yeah, if you have multiple sessions of photography, you take all the kids in photography, not one class, but all the kids in the course, and say these are the kids I noticed were the low ones based okay. on my my assessment. And so that's where the baseline data we talked about is. He set baseline data that is a, an assessment of students' current content knowledge, current knowledge. You could have gone back and also looked at like maybe their MSP scores or something like that, some reading and writing, to also get some other data points to say, oh, yeah, they really struggle in those areas. You could look at previous grades. And then you can also look forward into your curriculum and say, you know what, kids, students always struggle here. This thing always makes them sideways. So that's those three pillars of baseline data that you would all use. 
the one that always has to be is the one that you do. And it's on, it is on a curriculum-based measure, not a unit-based measure. And, though, and what I mean by that is a unit-based measure is a unit of instruction. I want them to know emphasis. And I have an assessment for emphasis. You'll have unit-based measures from kind of an assessment person's hat. I see you have unit-based measures in emphasis, repetition, texture, and balance, because you're assessing the knowledge there. Your curriculum-based measure kind of assess all of it. It wasn't that deep, but it had a long screen of all of that measure. That's why what you wrote was, when I looked at you, you have all the components. The important piece is, as educators, we know what those components are. Because this, this what you do is teaching learning. You have to, because if you don't know it, then you don't know what you're missing, what piece you're missing of that process. To truly make your assessments reflect the instruction that you do. So, 